Hey, what is going on you guys? It's Epic here and this is going to be a no-nonsense guide on how to find and beat all three secret bosses in the Chaos Chamber. At the end of every non-obelisk or non-boss room in the Chaos Chamber, you have a chance to have these runes spawn around the portal. Some players are reporting that if these spawn, you'll hear a sound cue in-game, but it's always best to just look around the portal since they are not that hard to find and they usually glow. Once you find the symbol, simply interact with it and it's going to start a puzzle which will give you three attempts to solve in order to unlock the boss. These puzzles will often have a mechanic which is tied into the actual boss's mechanics, so make sure you're paying attention to what they are to further help you in the boss fight later. Starting with the blue rune or Glupathoth, when you interact with the rune, it's going to travel to a location and make an initial starting portal. Then it's going to travel somewhere else in the room and make a finishing portal. Your goal is to make your way to the portal with the three orbs above it and stand inside of it until one of them, usually the one on the left, starts following you. It's going to follow the closest player to it, so if you're in a team, make sure that you communicate this. It is your job to lead it to the finishing portal without it touching anything in the room or without anyone shooting it or colliding with it. Once the orb is passing into the final portal, you want to shoot it to blow it up and that is going to blow the portal up and you would have beaten the Glupathoth puzzle. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the yellow portal. This one is for Bunnid Hog and when you interact with this symbol, it's going to fly somewhere in the room and it's it's going to make a shining yellow rock. Your goal here is to break the rock which is going to uncover a symbol which you will then have to shoot again to break. But there is a little twist here. When you break the rock open, the symbol is going to have a flashlight attached to it which is going to spin around trying to find the player. It is your job to avoid being seen by this light and an easy way to do so is just simply turning away from it when it goes over you. If you are looking at the light while it shines at you, it will flash bright and the symbol will disappear. So when you're ready, simply break the rock and then quickly shoot at the symbol to break it, making sure that that flashlight does not see you. Once the rune blows up, you have completed the Bunnid Hog puzzle. And now finally for the green symbol aka Barkenstein, when you interact with it, it will once again fly somewhere in the room, this time growing a mushroom out of the ground. When you're ready to start the puzzle, jump on the mushroom and it's going to shoot out a series of little mini mushrooms into the air that you're going to have to shoot in sequence. You'll know which one to shoot because it will be glowing purple and if you fail to shoot them fast enough then all of these spores will hit the ground and you will fail that puzzle. You'll have to do this three times and each time you do it there will be more little spores for you to shoot and if you are in co-op you will also have an increased amount too so make sure your teammates are helping you out with this one. Repeat the sequence three times and you would have solved the Barkenstein puzzle. Now in order to fight the bosses you're going to have to get to the end of the chaos chamber and instead of taking the yellow portal after you finish your boss fight there's going to be a red portal which appears instead. This is the one you're going to want to take in order to go and fight these secret bosses. When you head inside, the maker will start talking to you about how dead you're going to be and then will flash a symbol giving you a hint on the boss you're going to be fighting first. Yellow will be for Banidhog, Blue will be for Glupathoth and green will be for Balkenstein. Now starting with the easiest boss first, let's take a look at Glupathoth. You're going to be teleported into a room where you want to head over to the leftmost island. When you get to this island, Glupathoth is going to start shooting out these frozen orbs at you similar to the puzzle and what you want to do with these is just simply break them. She's then going to get angry and fire down a series of dark magic orbs on the ground but if you stand on the little broken pillar that you see in the gameplay right here, you should be mostly safe from these so just wait it out. She will then most likely fire some more frozen orbs at you which you will promptly shoot once again and then she's going to go into a spectral form and start flying around the room making these portals that we saw earlier in the puzzle. Now if you have enough damage you do not need to worry about all of these portals so simply wait on your island until she comes back around to you and when she summons the last portal there's going to be three in total she'll also summon in a bunch of snake people to come and attack you you just want to take those down and then very soon after making the portal she's going to shoot more of the frozen orbs at you but this time you want to guide them into the portal that she made and blow it up in order to stun her. This is done simply just by shooting them when they get into the portal and once you've done so it will rise the ball into the air it will blow up freeze her and she'll fall to the ground. Now very quickly run over to her for the damage phase and shoot at the sigil above her. It's going to do crazy amounts of damage and most people will be able to take her down in one phase. If you have enough damage she will explode into ice and you'll move on to the next boss and 
if she is not, you simply just rinse and repeat with the other portals in the room. Now, let's talk about Barkenstein, the green boss. When you head into the encounter, what you do not want to do is open up on damage on Barkenstein. And the reason why you do not want to do this is because this boss has tons of damage reduction. Instead, what you want to do here is pace yourself, taking your time and waiting for Barkenstein to do one of his attacks, which is indicated with a sound cue. When Barkenstein goes for an attack somewhere on his body, usually where he's going to get the attack going from, is going to be a purple glowing sigil that you want to shoot before the attack gets sent out. If you can do this fast enough, you will stun Barkenstein and deal tons of damage to him, and this should be your main primary way of dealing damage to the boss. If he does a claw attack, the sigil will be on his hand. If he does a tail attack, it will be on his tail, and so on. But the moment that you stun Barkenstein too many times, he will go into an enraged form, at which point you cannot stun him for a little while, so you will have to just survive until you get back to the stunning phase. Now, aside from the stunning mechanic in this fight, there is only one more that you need to be aware of. Sometimes Barkenstein will head into the middle of the arena, and similar to the puzzle we solved to get to this boss fight, will start firing spores into the air, which you will need to shoot before they hit the ground. Now, while you don't need to get all of them, you should be aware that if you fail to shoot these spores before they hit the ground, they will make a massive dot cloud, which will probably down you and make it hard to see Barkenstein, most likely resulting in your death. So when he starts firing those spores out, the best strategy here is just to find an area of the arena that you're comfortable in and then shoot the spores above you so that you are safe until they all dissipate. But regardless, rinse and repeat the mechanics until Barkenstein is dead. It's not too hard to get down. The only thing that's pretty difficult here is the timing on the attacks. And now finally, let's talk about the yellow boss, Bunnied Hog. This is easily the most difficult fight out of the three because of how much pressure it can put on you and how easy it is to lose lives here. As soon as you go into the fight, you should be aware that Bunnied Hog is probably going to try and laser you with a massive AoE attack, signified by the big rune on the floor. You want to dodge that as soon as possible, get out of there because it will deal a ton of damage. There is also going to be skeletons spawning in, which you will need to take out quickly because they are extremely accurate and will most likely take you out. So kill the skeletons and dodge Bunnied Hog's attacks. And speaking of attacks, there is quite a lot of them, and they are usually done in sequence, but for the sake of the guide, we're just going to break them down one by one so you know how to counter them. One of the attacks, which happens quite frequently, is that Bunnied Hog will send a shockwave through the floor, making a massive sand ring go through the arena, which you will need to jump over if you want to avoid taking damage. Another attack is the stones, which will rise out of the ground, signified by the glowing lights on the floor. If you are in that area when they're coming out of the ground, they're going to hit you and they're going to deal a ton of damage. But you should be aware that if you go down, one of the stones can actually be broken for a second wind. But speaking of the stones, they do have a cool tie into one of the other mechanics, which is what I like to call the wipe mechanic. Sometimes Bunnied Hog will curl up into a ball and above its head will be a sigil that will start glowing and you will have to destroy the sigil to break the Bunnied Hog out of the encounter before it does crazy amounts of damage to you, sometimes wiping your team. While it's not guaranteed, sometimes this will do a lot of damage, so make it an absolute priority to destroy this thing before it destroys you. And the reason why I bring it up with the stone mechanic is because you can avoid taking damage from this if you simply hide behind one of the stones that came out of the ground earlier in the encounter. Now, there are two other mechanics you should be aware of. One of them is the dive mechanic, where Bernard Hog will take into the ground and then dive out and then try to dive into you. So that one's pretty easy easy to guess. You just kind of get muscle memory for knowing when it's going to do it and then you just move out the way. It's not too hard to dodge. And the last one and sometimes the most difficult mechanic is the swimming mechanic. For this, Bunnied Hog will take into the ground, signified by the scream and the sandstorm that will go around in the arena. And Bunnied Hog will then start swimming around the arena with a rune on its head and a flashlight trying to spot the player. This is very easy to get away from. You simply just turn away from the flashlight every time it's about to look at you to avoid getting blinded and taking a ton of damage in the process. But speaking of damage, you will be actively taking damage during this mechanic, which means you need to end it as soon as possible because trust me, it does not end for a very long time. And if you don't destroy that rune, it's probably going to end up with your whole team dying. So to do this, you guessed it, you simply just have to shoot at the rune on Bernard Hog's head as it swims through the encounter to break it out of that phase. And while there is no real massive strat to taking this boss down, it's all about muscle memory, learning these mechanics, and being ready to counter each one of them when they come up. This is all about pressure, and if you can survive the pressure, you will have beaten Bunnied Hog. But there is one more secret boss to take down, however, we're not going to be covering that in this video, so thank you guys for watching, really hope this helped you out, and I'll see you in the next one.